All right, the next thing that we want to do is start to get a little bit of a feel for the VR1 database. Um, it's going to be uh, going back to a file and uh, interacting with some of the, the data types. So let's go ahead and open a VR file uh, as We've seen in the, uh, the first video, uh, the commands can be referenced in multiple ways, and it will become obvious that I have a very particular way of doing things, and uh, so much so that I almost never do anything different. So uh, there are going to be many times when I am going to stumble around trying to find a command or trying to find a way to do something that I know is there and I want to possibly um, illustrate but uh, I do it so rarely that uh, I may not even remember how. Uh, in general though I'm going to try to both type into the, uh, the main window the command input lined in the main window or pick things from the menus. Um, we'll get into some of the other ways of interacting with uh, the command structure. Uh, things like function keys and macros and editable toolbars, all that are essentially magical. Uh, they just, uh, you get used to doing things in a certain way. Uh, sometimes I may type things that don't mean anything to anybody. It's just um, uh, a string of letters or characters that I have memorized over time. Uh, when I do that I will try to go back and uh, do it the authorized or normal way. Uh, let's go ahead and open a VR file. Uh, file. Open VR. I'm going to open my example file. Uh, in the uh, zooming, uh, typically the way that I am going to zoom most often is just by typing. Um, you know, I quick quick introduction to macros. Uh, anything that can be accessed by the menu, for example, graphics, zoom, zoom all, and here we see that the shortcut for zoom all is Z O O A. Uh, that is generally. Uh, I am either going to type Z O O A or I have a macro that is just A for all. Um, there's some history behind that, but that's uh, typically what I'm going to do. Uh, same thing with, uh, I can do is a um, Z O O W to do zoom window. And notice down here, in the uh, one of the status areas, the currently running command is Z O O W, and uh, so I can click to zoom into that window. Uh, that command is still running, so I can do that. Um, I can, while that's running, I can type. A to zoom all. Uh, I can zoom back in to the window until and zoom window is one of the rare commands that does not have a dialog box. Uh, the, the, it, it, it's essentially just you start the command and keep it running and every time I click a window lower left upper right or even upper right, lower left, or any corner to any other corner, it is going to zoom, and that will stay running until I end it. All the commands end with 
the um, it would essentially be the pound key on a uh, an old numeric keyboard or uh, button 12 on the keypad or F12 on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit F12 and that ends and I can do a zoom all and now I can click anything that I want and the zoom is not going to uh, it's not going to be zooming because that command is not running. Uh, commands run in VR until you end them and you can stack them on top of each other and back uh, add things onto the stack and back off of the stack one at a time. Uh, you can configure how deep that stack of commands can go. Uh, this is all for later, but let's just uh, do a zoom window and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to see all the entity types that are available in VR. So it's important to realize that this VR file, this database, is almost never going to be a deliverable. Uh, it's almost always going to be translated into something else. Because of that, the, beta, the, the database is designed for uh, what I feel like is a, a maximum flexibility for transferring to multiple other file structures, whether it's uh, uh, DXF or uh, MicroStation or a CSV file or a KML file or a shape file. Uh, and there are multiple files that we can export to. Uh, won't really talk much about those now, but just understand that the, the database structure has really been designed so that we can transfer it to something else very flexibly, very easily with, uh, it feels like, uh, a, a minimum overhead in byte storage. As uh, before we talked about this, really the, the, the absolute primitive geometry stored is an XYZ coordinate. Uh, it can either be singular or in a series of XYZ coordinates that would form a line. Uh, we, we don't want to go too deep down into the uh, uh, the development of the da da database, but for now, understand that there are essentially four ways that those coordinates can be stored. They can be stored as uh, a string of coordinates forming a line. Every CAD structure would have a name for a series of coordinates. We're just going to call it a line and it is a series of XYZ coordinates. Uh, a singular coordinate can be stored as a symbol or as a text, uh, a piece of text, or as a, in VR it's going to be called a point, which is generally going to be used to store LiDAR data. Each one of these primitives, the line, the symbol, the text, and the point, have a variety of attributes, but at their core, they are XYZ coordinates. Uh, let's start with a single uh, a single coordinate and for the at first we're going to interact with a symbol uh, on this screen uh, 
these little green boxes with X's in them are symbols and this circle with kind of a, uh, a target pattern is a symbol. So if we want to edit a symbol, I could go to the edit menu, look at all the different things and ways that I could edit something. I can select edit symbol and now uh, this dialog box becomes important because in this uh, in this key dialog box it's going to tell me what every different key will do. Uh, the most common uh, are going to be, for example, the number one key, and I have the number one mapped to my left mouse button, and I have the number two mapped to my right mouse button. So if I go near this symbol and left click, it is going to lock onto that singular coordinate here displayed as a symbol. Um, if I, and I go back up and look at now, the context for those keys changes because now I am actually locked onto something. I'm not searching for something. And now I can do a variety of things. I can hit the number one button and go back to search mode. I can hit the number two button and uh, start the rotate function. All of these, uh, and it's important uh, to look in the VR help file, understand how to interact with these keys. On a normal keyboard, uh, I have got the F1 through F12 just go right down the line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, F10, F11, F12 are mapped to these 12 buttons. I've got a little label on my keyboard so I can keep track of what they are. Uh, I also have an external USB keyboard where I have mapped each of these if I want that available. I can use the numeric pad on a keyboard by turning off the num lock and then the uh, uh, the keys become these uh, these buttons most often uh, I'm going to use my little external numeric keypad or the function keys that's just because what I get used to although the vast majority of things uh, I am going to use just the mouse which is why I have mapped the most important things to those two mouse buttons and I actually mapped the number four to the wheel uh, which sometimes I use for scrolling but uh, most often it is just uh, using the, the left and right buttons on the mouse. So let's go ahead and lock back on to that and now see uh, some of the things that I could do or I want to display some of the attributes of this single point. So let's bring up the keyboard change. And now it's going to show me all of the attributes and give me the opportunity to edit them. In VR, a layer is just an integer. This integer gets attached to a string by an external file. So if I change the file, I change the string that's displayed. If I go back up here, I can see that layer 199 is on my system attached to the uh, arrow triangulation photo layer so that uh, the lines and um, photo centers are uh, stored in that layer, but in the database it's just an integer, 199. Same thing with graphic pointer. The graphic pointer is just an integer. There are graphics that are attached to that. And if I click this little uh, uh, expansion button here, I can see that all of the symbols have a graphic description. 
they are attached to uh, a particular number but in the same way if I change the symbol file the graphics for that integer will change so here we're looking at the uh, the efficiency of the database it's just storing an integer and it's referenced by an external file uh, have a different client that has a different graphic load up their symbols it's just referenced by a number so let's get out of that uh, some of the other things uh, I am always going to work with my pen numbers assigned by layer. Uh, this, sim this coordinate has a pen number attached. It doesn't reference anything because I'm going to pull the colors from the layers. Uh, there are a lot of other things here that uh, we use for various, uh, various functions. Some of them are integers, some of them are floating point, some of them are text. Uh, in this case, uh, the feature code is a string of text. It happens to be, uh, for me, it was uh, created as the name of the image. Uh, the symbol has a radius. Here the radius is in map units, 0.1. Uh, the scale of this is 1 to 1200, so 1 inch equals 100 feet, 0.1 would equal 10 feet. We can see that up here on the uh, menu keys, but just to give an, inter an idea how those react. Uh, the rotation and the X, Y, Z. Uh, the, uh, the main thing, the most primitive feature is the XYZ. Everything else uh, is uh, attached by external files or referenced by numbers. Um, something that uh, that is of interest, there's a free phrase for VR called key ins. Every function has a uh, a set of key ins that if I type something um, I can interact with either the uh, uh, an item that I'm inserting or an item that I'm interacting with. Uh, let's uh, we can see up here that the graphic pointer is 46 but if I were to key in grp equals uh, I don't know what 47 is off the bat, but let's say GRP equals 47, and we can see that the graphic changed to graphic pointer 47. And if I want to change that back, I can RP equals 46, and we can see that it goes back to where it was. I, I can do that with, with anything. I can do it with the radius, with the rotation, uh, with um, the, the layer the function key, any attribute can be accessed by way of key in. Um, that is a lot of information. We'll uh, Let's go ahead and go a little more quickly into uh, some of the other features because, it, again, because we're just working with coordinates, a lot of the other things have similarities. Uh, it'll go quickly. Uh, let's do an E-B-I-L-I-N edit line, uh, this time not grabbing the, uh, the menu. Notice we talked before that uh, I have a stack of commands running. Uh, right now I'm doing edit line. I can identify the line, button one. I can enter the parameters for the edit line function. This doesn't have anything to do with the the line I'm editing because I'm not. Uh, but button 7 is very often interacting with parameters or attributes. So let's go ahead and identify a line and like before let's hit the button 7 and bring up the attributes. A lot of very similar attributes like the symbol, but there are 
uh, a few others. Uh, for example, if I were to type in an elevation here, what would I want when I end exit this function? Do I want to just change a single point? Do I want to just change the whole line? I can set the whole line to a given elevation, or I can just change the elevation of a single point. Uh, there are other ways of interacting with the elevation, not to go into a, a lot of things here. Um, there is a point code and uh, uh, another flag that was uh, previously used for mosaic feather width. I do not believe it is used for that anymore. Uh, these are just attributes of lines. We're not going to go too far into the weeds here. Just understand that, um, um, for example, I want to change the feature code. I know that this is uh, flight line 2. So I might want to say the feature code of this line is line 2. Hit enter. And I can see that the feature code changed for that line. Maybe I am working along and I see a symbol that I want to edit. Notice that I have edit line and edit symbol running. If I want to switch between the two, I can say swap commands, SWA. Now I'm editing symbol. Maybe the uh, um, I, I want to change the radius here. So I'm going to change the radius on that one uh, and go back to editing lines using the swap. Both commands are concurrently running. I can lock onto another line and see that this is layer 106, my model limits. Um, for some reason, I want that to display heavier. So I can say, give me a width of 5. And now there's, I have changed that. Uh, for whatever reason, I didn't really want to do that. I can say undo and go back through the undo stack one at a time or multiply uh, or, or do multiple undos. Uh, even quicker, let's uh, edit text and lock on to this piece of text and really again just like the uh, the other single points um, we've got uh, many similar things but now we have to add things like what font what's the justification the height and width of the text the actual text characters um, so the attributes stored with a um, with the database. Since layers are just numbers, we'll get into layer management at another time, but I'll just throw one in here. I have got point features in layer 99. Points are most commonly used for LiDAR. I am going to say uh, layer on. There is a lay on plus, which is a shortcut for only and exclusively. I'm going to say 99. I'm going to say zoom to the visible extents of the data. And those points are on the screen somewhere. Let's see if I can make them bigger. All right. So now I'm going to interact with the page up, page down, uh, because that's just a shortcut for zooming in and out 0.5 time. There are four LiDAR points in this file. If I do a edit point, 
and lock on to one of those and bring up the attributes we can see that a LiDAR point has a lot more attributes that match the LAS file specifications so things like layer intensity, return number, edge classification uh, no reason to get into any of that right now but just understand editing a point um, shows us the attributes I could change the attributes of this point uh, that was created by an LAS in import routine and could be sent back out to a file using an LAS out. So that is a brief introduction to uh, a little bit of the commands, but mostly we're looking at the VR data structure and how, um, how things are stored in the .vr file.